So good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the third webinar of Aquatic Pollutants PhD Forum for the early career scientists of the network. Um, I will begin by saying that the next webinar will be on September, on September 28th uh, at uh, 1 p.m. Central Europe time. And the host will be Professor Shlomo Binker, and he will let us know about uh, publishing scientific articles, but from the editor's view. Uh, so that means that we will skip uh, the webinar of August since, since most people are on summer vacations. Um, and also you are invited to follow us on LinkedIn and stay tuned with all the news related to the PhD forum and I will put the link on the chat. Uh, this web webinar is being recorded for those who are not able to attend today. Uh, let's move on to the lecture. Today, uh, Mr. Semyon Polinov will present on methods for mapping and monitoring the sea pollutions using remote sensing techniques. Semyon is an early career scientist himself. He did his BA, his bachelor and master degrees uh, in the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies in the University of Haifa. Since 2016, Semyon has been involved in the Hamifrat's Bay Port Construction Projects. Uh, and as part of the project, Semyon is responsible for the development of geodetical aerial and drone surveys and bathymetrical survey uh, for coastal, coastal construction engineering needs of the project. Today, Semyon is a PhD candidate under the supervision of Dr. Revital Buchmann and Professor Noam Levine. His research focuses on changes in the human footprint in the Mediterranean Sea since the Industrial Revolution. The research is looking into the driving mechanism for changes from, uh, from a special and historical perspective. As part of the PhD research, Semyon examines topics such as oil and light pollution, marine uh, protected areas, and more. Since 2019, Semyon is a research fellow at the Center of Marine Policy and Strategy Research, HMS, under the executive of Professor Shaul Chorev. And as part of this research uh, responsibilities uh, in HMS, Semyon in, is investigating the impact of climate change on the Israeli maritime security and represents the HMS in cooperation with uh, uh, an Indian uh, research center uh, from uh, Delhi. Um, and now we will move to Semyon. The floor is yours. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, Semyon allows questions during the, the lecture. So, well, Semyon, go ahead. Uh, I'm preferring questions and uh, thanks uh, for sharing such a interesting introduction. <laughs> I'm uh, mostly doing it shortly than you, so thank you, thank you. And uh, let's start. Um, one second, I need to share before, for sure, yeah. The first one. So you see the correct one, yeah, great. Uh, so, a few additional words about my uh, field of interest and the tools that I'm using. I'm uh, coming from the field of remote sensing, image analysis, uh, geographic information, data analysis. And uh, my research uh, is a PhD research. Uh, I'm trying to analyze different impacts or different human activities at sea. For example, let's see this map, these two maps. These two maps represent the research, my research concept, but it's more deeper than my research. Here we can see cumulative impact of human impact on the sea. What it's mean, cumulative, if you are talk, talking about the cumulative, we have we should the base on the base database we have the individual, and the cumulative it means that we taking a lot of individuals impacts. For example, what could be individual impacts? It's shipping. It's some impact. It's negative impact for marine environment. And if we are taking the example of marine protected areas, it should be the positive for marine environment because we are protecting this marine area. 
And here we can see some areas with the high impact of human activities. And if we are looking on the map, we can see the red places mostly could be described as the shipping lanes, for example, here. If we're going to here, near Sri Lanka or here, we are thinking about the fishing areas. So this is the map of cumulative, but these such maps, it's like a stable in one time scale. And the, here we not see the changes over the time because we understand that in some places we have increase of shipping activities or light activities or another human impacts. And this is the second map that represents us the increase or decrease of uh, cumulative human impacts on the sea surface. And for example, let's see the Mediterranean Sea. This is the, our, uh, that where, where we are uh, located, let's say. I am from Haifa. And we see that in the cumulative index, Mediterranean, Levantine area, it's red. It's, it's sorry, the numbers, the names is the opposite. High impact here. But if you are taking the map of the change, we see that the Mediterranean area, there is no, not increase or not decrease in human activity. It means that the human activity in this area, in our area, it's more or less stable. There is no factors that contributing to, impact, to rise or decrease, for example, of fishing fishermen's activities or oil and gas, new oil and gas, uh, no. for now, yes, we have new uh, gas fields, but generally Mediterranean Sea are stable. And let's go to my research about the uh, oil spills. But before, let's take a look on the map. I remind you, if you have a question, stop me, ask me, or write your question in the chat. It's better because the idea is, uh, for me, the uh, better if I'm answering your questions and not the time uh, talking about this presentation alone. So Mediterranean Sea, when we are looking at the Mediterranean Sea, more first of all, we have three entrants. The Suez Canal, the Bosphorus, that connecting us to the Black Sea, and Gibraltar. This is the main uh, routes. So if you are looking on the shipping routes, they are connecting these main, three main, uh, these three main uh, entrance of the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, if you are removing the symbols of the vessels, we, we can see also the areas with the high density of the vessels activities. Here, for example, in Libya, it looks like more or less lower density, activ density activities over the vessels, but the reason could be that vessels here are not providing us for the, let's say, for the global, uh, they are not sharing, sharing their location on the, this system. And uh, this is the, the idea, it's to look if there is any um, higher a concentration of pollution on the shipping routes. This is the, was my the baseline for my research. And here we can see the north of Sicily, one of the west cells, and the, something happened with this west cell, and there. Uh, we can see, take a look on the time, time scale, a few days of this vessel staying in the same position. It's not moving. And something it's uh, dropping outside this vessel. This, in this case, it's uh, oil. So this is how it looks from the space. And when we are looking on the global map, let's say, uh, theoretical global map of human uh, presence and sea, we can see that uh, there is a lot of ways how we are using the dom marine domain. We have uh, pipelines, a lot of pipelines on the bot sea bottom that's our uh, full uh, bringing the gas or the oil from point A to point B. 
have bricks. We have thousands of probably millions of vessels, ships, different types. We have factories uh, that's located close to the coastlines. So they have discharging some type of uh, pollution also. And we have also geological process like sea, uh, natural seeps. This is a way how we get additional oil from the earth depths, geological layers. There are the seeps of the gas, oil, and different types of hydrocarbons. And we have satellites. In this case, we have we seen, can see the SAR synthetic aperture radar. It's active radar. And they are monitored. This is more or less the picture of a human activity at sea. If you are looking on the contributing humans and the natural processes, more or less, we are speaking about 50-50. So 50% 50 of oil coming to the marine environment coming from directly for, from the anthropogenic activity and another 50 coming from the uh, natural process. But natural process is the, is the name is they are natural and more of the marine nature are, let's say, okay with these natural seeps and the oil that coming uh, in slow, uh, slow rates, uh, they are okay and it's not uh, represented the, as a pollution, let's say, but pollution coming from the direct human activity, like uh, pollution from ships or pollution that coming from the factories or uh, some uh, accident with the pipelines, such oil input is, uh, uh, is, a, is a result as a high, huge mass of the oil coming to the marine environment. This, this marine one cannot uh, accept, let's say, and this is disrupting the uh, normal order, uh, normal uh, uh, environmental uh, ecological activity of the marine environment. So, if you are going to details of the numbers, so we have, we can see here it's 47 we see versus 53 percent of human activities. But let's say of the, for example, pipelines. And we can see that's only 1% of the oil that reaching marine environment coming from the pipelines. When we are talking about the tank or the big events that mostly most of us saw any pictures of tankers, it contribute only 8%. And when we are going to the field that sits uninvestigated and it's still unknown to most of the, let's say, decision makers, the marine ecologists, it's uh, illegal discharges. It's contribute, illegal discharges contribute 22 of con during the consumption and 3% uh, during the transportation. It's mean more or less as illegal actions by the vessels, we have 25% of oil that's reaching the marine environment. It's illegal, it's, or it's a direct, like say pressure the button of vessels, captain the pressure in the button and opening and dropping the oil outside. So this is the, my idea of uh, dealing with this segment of the pollution because this field, this segment, it's like say can be it can be controlled, and we can impact on it as a scientist. Okay, let's take a look on the spatial process of the oil after the reaching of the sea surface. So we have a vessel. This vessel accidentally or deliberately uh, dropping, uh, discharging oil to the sea. So oil, it's uh, less dense than the water, sea water. So it's most of it will be located on the sea surface. And the first time the dense molecules will be drop uh, coming down and for the sea bottom, some of these molecules we can see after, uh, if you're going to take and the probes of the sediment, we can find even after a few years, depend on the, in marine, uh, the 
climatic in environment of in this time of this pollution event, for example, if there is a not cloudly, so most of the west about thirty percent of the oil can be evaporated uh, by the by the sun. So if you have an event in the cloud and the cold weather, such chemical process of the evaporation and degradation, burning of the hydrocarbon molecules will be lower, slower. And another aspect is when we have a spatial process of the oil distribution after the pollution event, we have also the temporal dispersal process. Most of the processes and uh, they have happened in a few hours of the, after the, the event. So if we, if we are uh, detecting oil pollution event somewhere in the sea, first uh, question that we need to ask and to check it is what is the air temperature what, the cloud, what is the weather now? It's cloudly or not? What is the wind, wind? What is the wave directions, et cetera? Because it can help us to understand what we're going to, with this such process because they are controlling by the temperature mostly. But uh, after a few hours since the event it's happened, probably if you are sending to the so marine area uh, are drawn and we want to, to take pictures of the event, probably we can uh, not will meet any evidence of this event. Why? Because it will take time to the drone to arrive this area. But if we are going to the sea button, to the sediment, and we are taking the probe of the sediments, we can find the evidence of the any pollution events even after a few thousand years. So there is no any event that's the let's say deleted forever from the marine environment. Each event have a signature in the in some places in marine environment. What is the question that I ask in this research? The idea was is to compare three databases of oil spills available in the, for the Mediterranean Sea. And this is database. These two sources, ETOF and REMPEC, this is, let's say, big organizations that uh, also maintaining uh, a operation in, com in combat, preventing, helping with the oil pollution events in the Mediterranean Sea, ETOF with the global. And they're also collecting data. How they're collecting data? they collecting data by using a report system. It means if, for example, I am presenting Marine uh, Ministry of Environmental Protection of Israel, and we have an event of oil pollution in Israel EZ, I am reporting to this uh, organization that there was an event this is the location, this is the amount of spill that we are uh, detecting, and we are reporting to this organization to the REMPEC. In the other source, it's remote sensing. Remote sensing, it's uh, under MSA, it's European Maritime Surveillance Organization that using satellite images also to, to, to detect uh, oil pollution in the, in the sea. So here, this you can see this time period that I'm of the data sets that I'm work with, and the second, uh, the questions, the main question was what, which variables at the country level can explain the intensity of oil spills within EEZ or Mediterranean country. For example, what is the impact? of the length of the country coastline of the density of the oil spills. If as uh, the line, uh, the length of the coastline increase, I am expecting to see more uh, oil spills or not. Few words about, about the remote sensing and how the remote sensing is working. Remote sensing generally can be divided for two main fields, active remote sensing and passive remote sensing. Passive remote sensing is uh, satellites that are 
using same cameras more or less like our phones. It's passive because we are only taking the picture, we are pushing the button of the taking the picture and we are collecting the energy that's emitted from the objects. And active passive remote sensing are uh, limited, for example, when there is a cloud because we have emission from the cloud. So we can, can see the sea surface or earth when there's a cloud weather. Active remote sensing, such satellites producing energy, they are transmitting energy as you can see here. And they transmitted energy after they meet some uh, object, it's reflecting back to the satellite and we have uh, collecting data. In the case of the past active remote sensing, we are not limited by day or time or night. We are not limited by the weather. Such uh, platforms, satellite platforms working in every weather, all weather conditions in uh, every time because it's based on mainly on the type of the object reflectance. Um, for uh, in the optic, satellites remote sensing now we have uh, the main uh, wavelength bands of as you can see from 660 to 2400 nanometers wavelengths and this is the signature spectral signature of different type of the marine of the oil pollution hydrocarbon the family of the hydrocarbons what, how we can use it? Let's see the seawater signature. It means if you are taking uh, the image of the some satellite, for example, Sentinel-2, it's optic satellite, a, a satellite. So this is the line of this, of the seawater. This is how it will be look in case it's a clean water. If you want to see, to, to detect the crude oil, we need to find, to look for the pixels, that looks like this one. It means if you are going to this area, the difference between the signature of the seawater and of the crude oil, it's not higher enough because take a look here on the percents, on the, on the, on the values, it's slow. But if you are going to here, we have we can see that there is a lot of difference between the signatures of the crude oil and the seawater. And the main idea of working or detection of pollution and generally detection the difference, uh, the change over the some object is to look on different wavelengths and uh, estimate the difference between the pixel values, and this is help us to assess the presence of the pollution. Active, as I say, it's transmitting energy and we're getting back the energy transmitted from the surface. And here we can see pollution, oil pollution near the Suez Canal, the north entrance of the Suez Canal. <coughs> this is profile of the, of the oil, of the pollution. Here we can see more or less the same signature of the clean water in here. And this drop of the, of the signature representing us the different uh, behavior in the reflectance of the seawater. That's mean that we, we have different oil, different surface. In this case, different surface is oil spill. The one of the current problem for let's say in the field of remote sensing of marine pollution, it's validation and the calibration and validation of data of what we see because probably we can see here a drop of the reflectance, but this drop could also could be, for example, the algae bloom in some cases because the reflectance here we are using only one single band and uh, if we have a buoy for example that can measure for us the dense uh, the presence of the some chemical products uh, it will help us to create better detection uh, ability using some satellite images to detect such pollution and immediately to say what type of pollution 
what is the density of uh, let's say molecules of this pollution but we are not still not there we let's say it should be it should be developed i think in a few years but uh, the general the buoys operating the marine buoys at very cost uh, high cost uh, operation and satellite image side this one it's uh, open for a wide audience and everyone can download it and use it let's see the one of the main event pollution event of this year i think in the levantine era and uh, we are looking on the banyas in syria in the banyas we have a, there are a factory or the refinery factory here and uh, before one year more or less there start some uh, I don't know, I have no idea what happened there, but I detect a pollution from this refinery factory that's reaching the Latakia in the north. And uh, here you can see the uh, active radar, radar system. What we, we can see here more, we can hear different segments. So this is the pollution that the general flow is to the north. But here we can see the one segment of pollution. It's like, let's say it's new. It's still not, uh, let's say, suffering from the biological processes or chemical process. Here is already another one. It's still hydrocarbons. It's still oil, but it's another, in a, let's say, another uh, uh, structure of this uh, of oil on the sea surface and here is i think it's something that already uh, the algae it's is a result of the it's like the food for the algae the availability of food for the algae there is an explosion of the algae bloom here and here we can see the image day after of the optical uh, satellite image of Sentinel-2. Let's take a look here. The day before, most of the pollution going to the north direction. Here, day after, this pollution to, uh, going down to the south, not too long, but here you can uh, understand that uh, coastal pollution events, uh, they are harmful because they are close to the sea, close to the shore, close to the vulnerable, vulnerable uh, marine environment. It's close to the human uh, population uh, places, cities, uh, uh, shores, uh, and etc. And the, one of the main event of this pollution, it's a uh, spill that's Cross the area between the Syria and reach the uh, coast of the Cyprus, and even to the north, we arrive to the Turkey, Turkey coast. A few words about the, how the satellites work and why we have uh, less uh, data in the north, uh, southern. Uh, southern areas than in the, in the north so the most of the satellites that monitoring earth they are crossing from the pole to the pole and the, this is the way they are uh, doing around this, the globe so here in the north part we have a more is a result of the curvature of the earth we have more uh, images than here so as a result of this when we are discussing the density of detected oil spills, we should, let's say, be aware, aware for, to this uh, fact, because we have still not uh, constant, with, uh, constant satellites around each part of the Earth, and we are still not monitoring 24-7 all location of there. Probably it will be in 10 years, for example, but still not. And this is the reason, in some cases, that later on, I will show why here we have lower density of the oil spills than in the north part. One of the previous research, 
since uh, in 2008 uh, nine published. They are used uh, satellite images of the active system, uh, SARS, and they are detect the location of the spills in the Mediterranean Sea. So let's see it. Here we have the sweats. So we have a concentration near the sweats. We have a lot of spills in the, on the main shipping route connecting the Gibraltar and the Black Sea in the, in the Suez Canal. We have a lot of spills in the middle of the Adriatic Sea. And here between the Corsica and Italy, we have also a lot of the spills. For each of these spills of each location, there is different reasons, different type of spills, but they're general, this is the picture. But also this the picture is not full. Why it's not full? Because in this time, there is, was a lower, much, much lower number of the satellites in the orbit that's monitoring the Earth. So if we will increase the number of the satellites, I think we can multiply it, the number of the spills a few times than it, uh, we think it's, we have now. And uh, this is the satellite source of the, our understanding of what's going on on the marine pollution or the Mediterranean Sea. In the second one, this report system is the REMPEC. As I said, they are report based, they are knowledge on the reporting. They are working with the local administrators, like marine protection, uh, marine, uh, like a uh, environmental ministry. And they are reporting more or less a drop of the oil spills from the tankers in last 20 years. Here, we, if you're going the, for the next years, we have a more or less zero events. And it's true. Why it's true? Because uh, the tankers are today more, much more safe in their structure than before. That's so. Even if there is in a tanker accident, the, in most of the case that today the spills are not uh, discharged to the sea. Before 30 years, yes, the tankers were more, much more safer and the small accident wind in tanker, we have a big uh, oil pollution accident. So, so let's take a look on the density map of the spills derived by the tankers, the big events. It's huge tankers that moving the oil by the sea. And here is the accidents uh, of the uh, higher with the impact, not the impact with the pollution amount uh, higher than seven tons of oil. Where we, where we have uh, hot spots, mostly we have uh, hot spots near the coast. Here near Malta, in Israel, Haifa and Ashdod, Lebanon, Piraeus, and some part of north of Italy. And a few cases we have we can see in this in the open sea. And why it's happened there? There's an accident. Something happened with such tankers. But if we are looking on the 10, last 10 years, there is no events. So let's say we minimize the problem with the tankers. There was in the one of the huge event in the Mauritius before one, two years more or less, but generally there is no problem with tankers now. And if you are looking on the map of the Libero discharges and when is the captains of the vessels deciding to drop, discharge the oil to the sea, this is the map. And here we can see a few differences in the locations. One, we can see that, let's say the open sea, the deep sea, much more polluted. Here we can see a much more event of the delivery discharges than the coastal events of the tankers. And the, here, for example, you can see that near the coast of Israel, we have, an, uh, we have maybe one, two events here. No, it's one event here and, and, and not, not much more. 
And if you want to compare these two maps, these two types of pollution sources, for this period, we have more or less 15 spills per year. And 90% of the oil spills happen near the coastline. About when we're speaking about the deliberate discharges, at least it's 700 spills per year. I will say it's 2000 spills per year or few spills per day. But today I'm uh, continuing to monitor marine uh, Mediterranean Sea. I would say it's about 20 deliberate discharges, at least in the Mediterranean Sea each day. And they are happening mainly on the main shipping routes. Why? Because the vessel that's leaving the Suez Canal and going to the Gibraltar, they will drop the, some residuals or ballast water or something somewhere on the way, but it should be far away from the coast because they don't want that this oil will reach the coast. And they doing mostly also outside the territorial water of the, of the country because they want to be outside the, the, let's say the law of the country. And I performed the statistical analysis of the oil pollution and trying to, dis to describe why in the, some countries the, the oil pollution events higher than in another. And I found the interesting correlation, for example, with liner shipping con connectivity. Liner shipping connectivity of the country saying that how much country involved in the, uh, in the maritime global activity. For example, let's say, let's take uh, in the Haifa port. Haifa port have a, a higher in a connection connectivity index. It means that to Haifa and from Haifa, we have access to the huge number of the ports. There is a few types of the vessels that come into Haifa port. And if, if you are taking small ports, let's say Banyas. So they have only probably tankers, mostly, that coming to the airport and maybe some bulk carrier vessel. So there is a lower connectivity. So as much my and the liner shipping, it's mainly bulk carrier at cargo. So if, we, if our mind, we think that's the oil pollution coming from tankers, I trying to say that's no. Uh, currently, the main uh, the main source of the oil pollution of the sea is general cargos, bulk carriers, the ship that we are not thinking that they are polluting, but yes, they are main source of pollution. Uh, the number of ratified the conventions by country. So there is a few. There is about sixty. A marine, a marine conventions that country can ratify or not ratify. And uh, I thought that it's a much higher of number of this uh, conventions country signing, I'm expecting lower number of the pollution events and the economic zone of this country, but this is opposite. As much higher number of the convention, the country signing, there is a high with much more if, uh, pollution events in the country. It's a, I have no idea why it is, is uh, but this is the let's say statistical fact that I'm found. So coastline also affecting the the probability of the oil pollution. Here the reason could be the ability of the country to monitor the coastline is it how much is the coastline higher for example let's say the turkey it's it's hard to operate monitoring services by the ships for example by the buoys for this such long land coastline and the, for reason in this case we are in the good location because our coastline more or less shorter, and we have a, a, a huge a bread. We have a, enough presence on this on the coastline to to minimize the 
probability for the oil spills. And the container ports, throughput, it means what is the number of containers loaded and unloaded in the ports. So it's more or less similar to liner shipping connectivity. Is much more country get uh, container shipping in a more or less linear correlation increase the marine pollution in the easy water of this country. And this is how it looks the delivery discharge. Here is the vessel that moving somewhere in the sea. And this is a satellite image of active system. It's right radar. <coughs> so the question is, who is the source, this vessel or this vessel? I have no idea. Probably this one or this one is not really matter in this case, but in some case, yes, it's matter. And I think this one, because I can see that this is the main uh, line of the spill. And this is the dispersion process of the pollution of this oil. It's coming, go, going to the, let's say, north direction. And uh, the idea, I think, that should be implemented in the future is that we should detect this pollution. We have, we know the, the time and the location, and we can overlap it with the vessels that crossed nearby this area, and we want to detect them, if we want to find them. I, at least I am uh, having uh, as a goal to develop such system. So as I said before, at least 10 spills in the Mediterranean Sea on a daily basis. Such pollution mostly, it's chron chronic pollution. It's mean if you are going to some areas with such events, for example, the North entrance of the Suez Canal. It, uh, there's a place that are preferring the, the ships that are preferring to draw to discharge the water. So there is a chronic pollution that I'm not sure that if you are want to do something the marine uh, aquaculture, for example, in this area, that's no. I think there is a such area should be cleaned before we can do it. Currently, there is no punishment for such uh, vessels. And uh, this is one of the reasons why they are continuing to drop huge amount of the oil to the sea, because they are not, there is no punishment there. And generally, we are speaking about the increase of the number of the vessels. So it's more or less correlate with the increase in the number of the oil spills. So, Generally, we are stopped the big event of the oil spills from tankers, but we have still nothing to, to do with the deliberate discharges. And this is one of the event, it's not one event, it's one of the recent events that's happened in New Israel. Such event, I think we can see one per one week. This is one of the vessels that living, I am analyzed it after it, that I am detected it. it this vessel lived as dot port and going with, on this route here, somewhere here, this vessel opened the shelter and start discharging the some residuals. I cannot say for sure that this is the oil I cannot say what is, if it's oil, what is the concentration of oil? Can I say what is the type of oil it? I can say it's for sure that it's something that's uh, different from the marine environment. And this is the, I can say for sure this is the pollution. To be sure, what is it? We, we need to do surveillance on the vessels. We need to check their, the, the tanks and to find where is the missing volume of the some type of waters. Until it, we can say this is the, for sure this is the pollution. And as I say, if we have, for example, if we have a buoy here, 
we can take data from the sea surface and to be sure what is the what is the uh, substance that we can, we see in the satellite images. So we can correlate it. But here we can see detecting also detecting the 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 pollution event and not more. And why it's important to develop this? Here we can see the desalination plant of the Palmachim. Palmachim have an intake water in some somewhere here. And uh, how they are currently monitoring it? They have uh, the buoys, environmental buoys that monitor sea, sur sea surface for some parameters. And in case they are detecting something here. They are uh, sending messages to the control, and they collect the desalination plant can close the intake and they stop the taking the water to the plant. But what's going on, for example, if here is the oil spill coming, deriving to here, satellites can detect it and to to to, to send the message about it before it's reaching the the sensors here, and more probably even to take some stuff vessel with uh, some uh, um, chemicals that can uh, stop and the prevent of the oil to reach the the desalination plant or before. And I think this I trying to develop it in this different way, but it's not, still not. I think that. Desalination plant still working uh, on the basis of the local uh, measurements and not satellite images. What is the conclusion of the research? Shipping today is the main source, not the, the pipelines, not the nothing. The shipping, and the shipping we are speaking about the about the cargo, the bulk carrier, general cargo, this type of container ships. They are the main source, not the another. Most of the tanker oil spills happened near coastline because it happened mostly in the near the facilities. In last, uh, when the delivery discharges mainly concentrate outside the territorial water because they are want to be outside the local authority laws. In last 20 years, we have significant drop of the tanker oil spills an increase of the delivery discharges in the Mediterranean Sea. Levantine, area, Levantine region, it's hot spots for the delivery discharges. Why? Because we have any, let's say, such type of pirate activities or not really environmental, a good operation, environmental operation of vessels that are leaving the Suez Canal and going to the north to the Syria, to the Lebanon, and they are uh, creating a lot of the source of the pollution events that in most of the case, they are close to the EZO of Israel. And the remote sensing really effective technology for monitoring marine oil pollution. Today, we can derive a image, of, let's say if you are getting contact and data from different Satellites, I think you can read for four pictures per day. So we have, uh, it's like more or less continuous observation on the more uh, easy of Israel we can uh, to do. And few words about the technology that's existing today. We can detect shipping type of vessels using the satellite images. This is the example of, of how we're doing it. But we can still not detect oil spills. And the reason why we still not uh, teach, let's say, AI or deep learning to detect oil spills is because we are, as a humans, we, we cannot detect. We, can, we still not, uh, we don't know how to detect and to differentiate between this one and this one. And uh, it's here, for example, if you are looking for here, we also can say, okay, this by also should be pollution. So this is the problem why we still not, I think this is such images, uh, such technology can be operated, fully operated. What we can do, 
we should be stay on the human interaction, let's say. We can use a lot of the, uh, some mathematical uh, indexes to detect uh, oil spills. When we have detection of oil spills, we have a time, we have a location, we have more or less size and volume of the spill. What we do the next, we can overlap it with the location of the spill on the global map. For example, we detect it here. We saw that it's near Ashdod. It's near the desalination of the Palmachim. And the next question, if it's danger for the desalination. So we are modeling, modeling it. We are taking the, this event and modeling. There is a open uh, model software that called the uh, Metzlik. And for example, we're running it and we can see this. There is no pro potential impact for the uh, Ashdod and desalination plants of Palmachim, for example. But here, we probably have a problem with Hadera and Haifa. We have a problem with the Cyprus. So this is the way how the, let's say, future system of detecting and monitoring and the <coughs> reporting system should be. And we can report for the different uh, organization like Ministry of Marine Environmental Protection, Desalination Plan, uh, IRIA, IRIOT, uh, local authorities and uh, others. And here is the end, thanks. Thank you very much, Semyon. Um, so do you have do we have any questions? Um, you can just can, maybe you can say who is who is here more or less? Who is the uh, audience? So today we don't have uh, unfortunately a lot of audience because uh, I think a lot of people are on vacation, but um, um, yeah, if anyone would like to uh, Present themselves. Um, oh, they are, they're located in Israel uh, because I saw names and uh, not to Israeli names. So this is it's like colloquium of the European or something. Yes, yes, we have we have uh, also um, participants uh, from uh, Europe. So um, if I. Uh, if, if I may, um, so I've heard that the Mediterranean Sea is the most polluted sea. Um, Mediterranean, I don't know if it's more polluted. Levantine, our region is polluted, yes. Yeah, so it's how, what, what, is there anything that uh, is being done by the Mediterranean countries? Any, any movement to change that? I know it affects all of us. Uh, with fishing, with uh, bathing, especially what we can, what we can to do, or are you think asking in the, for the for the past? No, currently nowadays, is there anything uh, going on with? Yeah, I I know that Minister of, of Environmental Protection um, going with the call mm. uh, with the joint call, yeah, uh, for. Uh, uh, Israel, uh, they want to find the Israeli company that will monitor EZ of Israel using uh, satellite images because currently they uh, getting information from EMSA, from Europe Union. We have not uh, our local company or our knowledge to detect such events. It's like more or less individuals like me who is investigating and developing with some tools for monitoring it. But as a company, there is no company who is, can provide such uh, services. Okay. And I think that most of the countries not developing such uh, capabilities in home in, uh, and they are taking the, uh, let's say they are trying to get uh, information from the same EMSA, but the EMSA not 
providing uh, not providing good service, let's say, in, in such words, if I can say. <laughs> Because we have, we know that we have a, a, a accident before in the last, not the last, in the February 2021. And uh, this event, if you are going, uh, if I'm analyzing the satellite images, I can say that this image, uh, that uh, the pollution, you can see the pollution uh, two weeks or a week before that's reached the coast. Mm -hmm. So, if we get, if they are saying that they are doing uh, this, let's say this job, and providing the reporting uh, for countries when they are detecting the pollution events, so why they are not uh, providing this information for for Israel when it was? <laughs> yes. And these are the results that uh, we have a compensation now of uh, fifty million dollars for. Uh, uh, organization that called the IOPC. I see. Okay, so thank you very much. It was, uh, yes, of course, uh, the recording will uh, be on, uh, on the YouTube mm -hmm. and I will send you the link once I have it online, of course. Great. And I would like to thank you for uh, your uh, interesting le lecture. It's uh, interesting and worrying just like the previous uh, webinar um yeah so thank you very much and if there are no further questions then i would like to thank you all and conclude uh, this webinar bye bye bye, -bye.